Perfect Darkness is kind of exploring the fact that it, it sometimes to get away from all the noise of life, you've got to kind of get really, really deep just to so there's no no noise or no light or nothing, just to get that moment of um, peace and clarity. On this record, we wrote the music in a really kind of organic way. We uh, we wanted to do it all differently from a completely different angle. So, and the boys have grown in confidence over the years too, and I've relaxed my control freak side it comes from being a dance producer where you're just a total control freak and I've relaxed that and they've they've come up into the mix so we basically on this record we, we lots of rehearsal rooms lots of practice lots of jamming and recording jams and picking good moments and taking that moment and developing it into a larger song and then taking that moment into a rehearsal room and then and so on and so on, and so on. perfect man fall down like ashes from the fire we made love and every day we're gonna say we say that now when we make music it's it's definitely just about what we think's kind of cool and we've got such different influences within the band Timmy the drummer's got loads of influences from the 80s and 90s guys influences are very much metal and left field kind of stuff, out there stuff, challenging art, music in a way. And my influence is very much sort of 60s and 70s and Americana and, and the whole dance thing, the whole dance music thing. It's taken us, I think, three albums to do tracks where we go, oh, that, really, that, was, that was awesome on that one. Or like, um, sort of Revolution, not as an album in 2009, it was a uh, an experiment in uh, like what styles what is the voice going to fit? Obviously, it fits kind of soulful acoustic soul or something. But what about dub? What about what about indie? On in the distance and time around 2008, we did, tried to get into metal. We tried to do like folk metal with tracks like Little Blue Mailbox. And on the next album, on sort of Revolution, we did tracks like Q and A, which is trying to do like smooth sort of Pino Palladino esque sort of D'Angelo soul. And then on Perfect Darkness, we're doing like Fear is Like Fire, which is all big beats and guitar amps. It's a fair criticism to say that we, uh, we've made too much music, too many different styles, but we, we, the problem is everything we've done is out there. So if, if we had an unlimited budget and a four year period to do it, we probably think that the first three albums would have been melted into one awesome record with one style with a really good producer. First three albums are like, uh, to, in our minds, they, they're so different and they kind of all reflect a build up to the, to the latest album, Perfect Darkness. And, and on each record, we learned something new that we could bring to the table on, on the last album. So it's been the first record where we go into rehearsals to try and put the record on the stage and it was actually pretty easy, all you got to do is just play it. Whereas all the other records have been, how do we reproduce production things on stage with nothing? This one was, was dead, dead easy, it was great. Because, because, our paths they crossed, yesterday was hard, and all of us When I fell out of love with electronic music and got into live music, I was lucky enough to be working for a record company at the time. So I had access to as many gigs as I could see and call it work. And I was working in central London, which is the, the beating heart of live indie and bands. And so, um, yeah, for about a year, I just went to every gig I could go to, every showcase, every gig, every, whether there was metal or indie pop or American or whatever, just to catch up. But yeah, no, I didn't come naturally at all. It took a couple of albums and hundreds of gigs to get, get into it. Now it's no problem at all. Now I actually really love it. Uh, playing live is, is like uh, 
perfectly natural thing to do. And actually, you know, being a DJ meant that I never had a problem being in front of loads of people, and that was cool. But I did have a problem playing and singing in front of loads of people, but I've never had a problem being in public. First album, it's always tricky to tour because half the audience are there and they're going to love it anyway and half the audience are there and you could easily lose them by being shit. The moment you start selling out gigs is the moment you can then relax on stage a bit more and you can put in ballads and you can build journeys because you're confident that the crowd are going to be like, whatever well, it's what you want, quiet, or if it's what you want, noisy. Once you start selling out venues, it makes your set list a lot easier to write. Whereas in the early days of the gigs, you never do a ballad, you just get, people would just talk over you. So I remember when that moment kind of came in like 2008, when we did a tour, like small venue tour, and, and they were all sold out, which meant that they would all be quiet, think audiences. And we were like, wow, we can do it if only, we can, we can do all the ballads. So it's been, uh, it's been an awesome journey and way more complicated and subtle than, uh, than my electronic journey, which was just, uh, a really honest and beautiful relationship of just uh, wanting to listen to cool music and, and being paid to party. Take off, steal 
red light we can end. And I don't want another day to pray. No, 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 no. Take. Twenty thirteen there's a hundred gigs in between us and twenty thirteen at the moment, so I think we'll probably we'll probably wanna just chill for a second. And then when we're ready to do it all over again, then we'll do it, then we'll get on it.